Hello. Hopefully this is now working. Yes, we have a response. Cool. All right. Okay. I'm going to whittle on today about Kali Linux and Docker in unexpected ways. Right. Where's the next slide button? Do, 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 do. Ah, oh, the dual screen's not working today. Okay. Let's see if we can do this. Right. Okay. Quick overview of today, what I'm going to talk about. Um, I am on limited time, so I'm not going to spend too much. I'm just going to jump straight on into it. So about me, online, I go by the handle of Got Milk. In real life, Ben Wilson. I've been doing information security now for about 15 years or so, and I've been with offensive security for the last eight of them, of which the last two of them I've been working full-time on Kali Linux. So what is Kali Linux? For the people that don't know, Kali Linux is an open source distribution that is designed for penetration testing and everything else with information security involved. It's based on Debian rolling, and it's been around now for eight years. Yeah, eight years. There was Backtrack and a few others, so the history of it all goes on for about 18 years. Um, as I said earlier, Kali is designed for doing penetration testing. As a result, the operating system's been changed to do certain crazy things that you wouldn't find in a traditional OS. Um, there's also custom packages and tools. Examples of the crazy changes, we don't have privileged ports, we, so you don't have to worry about doing certain actions there. We also uh, patch Wi-Fi drivers. So again, if you want to do monitor mode and promiscuous to allow you to do any wireless assessments, we try and make life easy. We've also got things like undercover mode, so you can make your de desktop environment match into your surrounding environments and everything else. Um, we've got about 600 tools at the time of this demonstration uh, that are designed for doing all these different activities. Okay, so end user Cali. Here's a load of examples. I've just gone on Twitter. I've taken a few screenshots and I've just dumped it in here. Okay, so, but how do they use it? They use it often as a virtual machine replacement. Now, I know technically Docker is not meant to be seen as this, but end users do what end users will do. As a result, they will do some crazy things. Um, uh, so why, I mean, why do I mean about VM replacement? So rather than now going and starting up, as I say, VirtualBox, VMware, or the like, the rest of it all, they'll just go into Docker and they'll use it as a quick way of interacting with Kali. As a result, it's seen as a throwaway environment. Now, this is actually quite good in information security. The idea being you're doing a new assessment, you're doing some new work. Every single time you want to have a nice, clean environment and you can just throw away so there's no personal information, there's no existing client information there. You put it back to a good known state. Docker is a fantastic quick way of doing it. Now, yes, also Docker gets, uh, sorry, Kali and Docker gets to use a lot, a fair bit in doing capture their flag events. Again, a lot of the Twitter posts were showing this, but we've also heard people using it, doing a penetration test. Now they do it maybe as from their machine, but then what we've also heard from people that have done it is they have done assessments where they then get access to a workstation, could be a developers or something else. And then they actually pull down uh, Kali, the Kali image and containers and everything else to go along with it actually on the client's machine. So therefore they don't have to then do any tunneling or any pivot. They're actually using stuff. In a sense, it's the whole new term living off the land they okay they might have to put something in there but then they are able to use it as a base point going forward okay now this is some of the things that people have done the top screenshot here it's a relatively one liner you pull down our image you share a port ready to go so if you want to have a callback or some type of network service to try and get around that you share a home folder and hey boom you type in a command you type in that one line command you've got a Kali environment in front of you. The Kali images that we put out are the baseline 
So they're clean as possible. We try and have the best baseline going. As a result, there's very, very, very limited amount of packages out of the bat. This is how Docker, we believe, should be. Um, but again, end users do end user things. And we hear a lot of times where that they're not happy that the Kali tools are not in Docker. As a result, you will see people that spend a little time of doing research, they'll do something in the second screenshot where they make a basic Docker file and they can then pull down tools and hey, there it's ready to go straight away. Now, Kali's got various different meta packages and by meta packages, we use this as a terminology as grouping packages. We have classed various different packages like our top 10 tools that we use on assessments. We then also have another one called here called Headless, which doesn't require any type of GUI interaction. Perfect again for Docker. You can just anything command line, boom, done. And you'll end up with a Docker image that's, yeah, I think about 15 gigs, relatively large. Um, but hey, not everyone likes command line. So, some people have then used no VNC to allow them to get a graphical user interface in a nice familiar environment, AKA Kali in the web browser. Yes, there are other ways that I'll talk about, but what this is doing is it's installing uh, tight VNC. Then from tight VNC, it also then puts no VNC on. No VNC is a web-based VNC desktop client. And so they can use that to then interact with the type VNC. So when they go to a certain web page, they then get a graphical user interface. Great. You can then just move around. The lag's not too bad. And again, they're using they're using Kali. Um, you can also then just still you can cut out the middleman of no, um, no VNC. And if you wanted to use say a native um, VNC client, like if you're on Mac, you could then just connect. If you're on Windows, you can install RDP service. And again, just use a native client to interact. You don't have to go through the web browser. We've seen it. Um, the, what I'm showing you here was something that we're currently working on. Um, we were hoping to have it out for the, uh, the release that's just got dropped this afternoon. Um, a few only a matter of a few hours ago, but unfortunately didn't reach the freeze. So hopefully the next Kali release will have this ready to go out of the bat. I'm just showing the demonstration what we've <coughs> sorry, I've just shown the demonstration. Okay. So enough about the end users. How as developers are we using Docker? And technically at this point in time, we're not. Um, who we're using for our CI, the providers having upgrade issues, they've upgraded some hardware and the cloud's gone wrong, their software's gone wrong. And as a result, our whole process of automating the build of our Kali images is no longer working. We're manually um, building on our home machines and then just pushing it out. As soon as it's back in production, we are going to be using it again to test our packages. So the first, so when you do a commit to the package, re, any package in the package repo, uh, it will then take pull down from the master or main branch. It will then try and compile it and build it, and it will do it actually in a Kali environment. If it works, fantastic. If it doesn't, we can then get the errors. And we try and get to a close to a Kali experience as possible outside of the local environment. There are then various different stages, but this is the first stage in the package building process, which happens remotely. Now, there's one other aspect of how we use Docker, and that is Kaboxer. Kaboxer is Kali Application Boxer. It's putting applications or tools inside containers, but for packages. This kind of got released earlier this year, I think round about May. And the idea is, is to put hard to package tools into a package and we can do it in a correct manner. Now, instead of being in a standalone container, it will integrate into the rest of the Kali package management system. Therefore, you can use the standard ATP update commands and installers, whatever you want. The idea 
idea is to be as seamless and transparent as possible. Now, not every single tool is easy to package. We've seen a lot of them. We've seen where there's absolute crazy dependency trees or they use legacy libraries, looking at you, Python 2. We've also seen where they do some really odd system changes uh, to the operating system or, <coughs> or where they will do a change that will break another application. Now, if, without using Kaboxa, what can we do? Well, we can work upstream with the tool authors. Um, we'll try and make it as easy as possible. Alternatively, we can spend a long, long time trying to package it, or we can just give up and say, no, we're not going to package it. Um, now, we've got three examples currently in the Kali repo. We've got uh, a .NET application that starts with various different services in the background and then uses a web application to interact with it. We then also have a Firefox developer edition, which is a graphical user. It's really large and a fair few moving parts. And then we also have ZenMap, which uses Python 2 and all the legacy applications to go with it and all the, sorry, all the legacy libraries to go with it. Normally these wouldn't be available. So as a result, we can put it into a container and it then were able to go into side of Kali and end users get more tools. The idea is we want to be as transparent as possible. So end users don't really know that they're using it. They just get more tools. But for us as developers, this is a complete game changer. The downside with it all is what would be if you without using it just a couple of megs or even a couple of kilobytes, it instantly puts it over 100 megs. It's much, much bigger because you've then got to pull down the container to go with it. It also therefore requires internet access to actually install things. So putting things on the standard Kali installation out of the box is just not there. It's on our roadmap to address at some point. We'll get to that hopefully some point in 2022. Okay, real quick, so I know I've now whistled on for a fair bit. A quick demonstration. Um, I've not trusted the demo gods today, so I've just done screenshots, and I do forgive me for the coughing. So here we can see well, I've just done a quick search uh, using app cache search. I've then listed out all the applications that use Kaboxa. And then from there, you can just do your standard app install. There we go. Once it's installed, you get a nice, easy stop start. OK, so you start it. Boom, job done. Now, if you can squint and see there, the third screenshot is your Docker PS, you may be a little bit more familiar, but this is what's happening on the back end all using Kaboxa. Kaboxa is just starting handling and managing every single aspect of it all. And then you can also use Kaboxa to actually list and manage it as well. So you have the application, you then have Kaboxa, and then you also have Docker. There's three different ways of being able to see what's going on. And here's another example of Kaboxa in action. Here's a graphical user interface. Like I said earlier, this is what's using Python 2. This shouldn't be happening in Debian, latest Debian version, because Python's at end of life. Therefore, it doesn't need any, all these libraries shouldn't really exist. But you can see ZenMap is running in full graphical glory. OK, I have now talked to the screen for far too long. If you want to get the slides, there's a QR code, scan if you dare. There's a link to type in and how to reach out to me. I'm quickly just going to look in the chat if there's any questions, and I don't think there is. So I will now wish you all a good day.